Treasurer, thank you. We have our first question from Noel. Yes, good afternoon, Treasurer and Dr Ryan. I'm a long-time um, resident of Kew and my family for over 100 years. I have one question to both of you, please. Treasurer, you said in this document received yesterday, we will receive net zero emissions by 2050. Dr Ryan, in your brochure, Australia will not reach net zero emissions until 2094. This is a lie. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I need to put it so, a minute, your brochure. You will not reach net zero emissions until 2094. The Liberal government's documents are a lie. Who should I believe? Well, thank you, Kieran, and thank you so much for that question. Let me state from the outset that climate change is one of the biggest issues the world faces. And I'm absolutely committed to practical, strong action on climate change and was a very public and strong advocate for our government's commitment to net zero emissions by 2050. Australia is 1.3% of the world's emissions. So it's a global challenge and we have to do our part. Now, we committed at the Paris Agreement to reduce our emissions by 26 to 28% by 2030 on what our emissions were in 2005. That was the benchmark. To date, our emissions are down by 20% and we're on target to have our emissions down by 35% by 2030. In comparison, Canada's emissions are down by just 1%. New Zealand's emissions are down by just 4%. And the OECD average emissions are down by just 7%. We in Australia have seen $35 billion of renewable energy rolled out in just the last few years alone. And what we see with the government's plan, it's called the Technology Investment Roadmap, is $22 billion of your money being invested to leverage $84 billion of the private sector money to reach that goal of net zero emissions by 2050. So we will get there. We have the, we have the costed plan to get there. In the budget, we've invested in everything from microgrids to new clean hydrogen facilities. We have Snowy 2.0 that's being built as a big battery for the east coast of Australia. But we've got to mutually achieve a number of objectives. Of course, we've got to reduce our carbon footprint. That's a priority. But we've also got to ensure that electricity prices stay low. They're down by around 8 to 10% in the last two years. And we've also got to ensure that the grid remains reliable. So you will get to net zero. We will get there, but we've it's got. It's not to... dead. It's that that, the, that that promise is not dead. Is one of your colleagues. It's a co said. it's a coalition commitment, and it's absolutely okay. fundamental, Dr. Ryan. For us. Look, the sad fact of the matter is that since 20, 2015, our carbon emissions have, if you remove the fudging that's associated with the numbers associated with land usage, land clearing and forestry increased by 4%. This is a government that does not have a plan for net zero by 2050. It has a plan for a plan. In the most recent budget, the amount of money allocated to amelioration of climate change decreased. Mr Frydenberg's budget did allocate $20, million, $20 billion to Barnaby Joyce as a fudge for his agreement to net zero by 2050. That was $20 billion for roads and dams that were uncosted, for which there were no business cases. And even with that agreement, we have a situation where last week the National Party are telling us oh, that there's wiggle room or that, or that net zero by 2050 is dead. This government does not have a real commitment to net zero by 2050 or for anything beyond that time. 